Zach for Isaiah's Fig Tree here with another episode of Walk in the Park. Can you guess where we are today? And how about here? How about now? How about now? So did you get it? We're at the East River Park, which runs alongside the East River and the FDR Drive from Montgomery Street to 12th Street. Before Robert Moses developed this park in the 30s, it was mainly an industrial area with uh, glass factories and slaughterhouses, railroad yards, things like that. Today, a vast amount of greens cover this landscape. It's actually the largest public space on the Lower East Side. We've got an amphitheater with summer events and concerts. We've got bike paths. We've got soccer fields, baseball fields. So we're gonna, we're gonna walk around the park and uh, enjoy the day. It's a beautiful August day. Today we've graciously been given the invitation by the Lower East Side Ecology Center to come to our plant golfing talk here at the East River Park. So if you've never gone tent to tent at the Union Square Market or maybe Googled local compost drop off, you probably never have heard of the Lower East Side Ecology Center. They're a community-based organization that does a lot of composting and recycling programs, some sustainable living uh, practice uh, education, training in land stewardship, things like that. So it wasn't too hard for us at Isaiah's Fig Tree to jump on board with these like-minded land lovers. So now we're on top of the fire boathouse here, which is LESEC's green roofed office. On this particular roof, we've got growing various varieties of sedum which is a perennial with thick succulent foliage. Uh, they love full sun, drought tolerant. They tend to have a very long life with few pest issues. Perfect plant for a rooftop baking in the sun all day. Also for maybe the busy or somewhat lazy gardener. Even out of towners have caught a whiff of the East River's uh, odiferous reputation. But green roofs can help, and here's how. When we get even a moderate amount of rainfall, excess rain mixes with sewage systems that are overflowing and trickles into our local waterways. But green roofs can actually soak up to 75% of that excess water runoff, and also delay the water from running off in the first place because the plants are there soaking up all that water. So if we think about it, 75% of the water that lands on our buildings and homes that then poisons our environment could actually be used to grow healthy food, uh, medicine, and beauty for our community. That equals 100%. Why aren't we doing this everywhere? So here's the go-to immunity booster echinacea, or purple cone flower. It's a hardy, drought-tolerant meadow flower native to uh, our area and all of North America. The blooms here are on display from June through September, but it's the root that is the medicine that's used in herbal teas. Cephalanthus occidentalis, or button bush. Another plant used medicinally, but can have some nasty side effects if you don't know what you're doing. Native from North Mexico to Nova Scotia and wet areas. These flower heads here are formed in June and they go through until about September until it'll start setting seed after that until about October. Uh, these flowers are great pollinators. They attract uh, all types of pollinators, bees, butterflies, and even curious folks like us. That's so New York. The squirrel on the garbage can and all. He's eating the garbage. Okay, so climbing up the boathouse here, we've got Lucky Trumpet Creeper, Campsus radicans. Actually, not that lucky. It's an aggressive climbing vine that will run all over the place if not maintained regularly. It does have these beautiful trumpet-like orange flowers that it gets its namesake from. Uh, and it is a northeastern native, so it does have some positives to it. Um, but you just have to stay on top of it if you have it in your garden, and it will kind of go rampant. It's trying to get on top of that rooftop and take over the sedum. Hydrangea quercifolia, or oak leaf hydrangea, native to the southeastern U.S., gets its namesake for these dark green, large oak-like leaves it has here. Produces some of the larger of the hydrangea blossoms. These are uh, panicles of usually white flowers early in the season. They kind of turn pinkish uh, at the end of the summer 
and uh, it's a deciduous shrub. It'll probably get to like four to six feet tall. Also has some cool exfoliating bark if you peek in there. So here I am flanked by another North American native, if you couldn't tell the theme of the vid so far. This is the lovely Clethra, looking quite elegant under the Willie B Bridge here. Uh, these guys are appropriately named Summer Sweet, as their late summer blooms have a very sweet scent that is very attractive to pollinators, as you might see some bees swarming around me here. These guys grow really beautifully in shade and moist soil. So if you have an area in your garden that's constantly shady and stays wet, think about Clethra. Think about Clethra. Think about it. So that's the largest public space in the LES in a nutshell for you. Thank you to the Lower East Side Ecology Center for inviting us. Thank you for joining me on another episode of Walk in the Park. Go grab yourself a nice ice cold echinacea smoothie and come down and see what the Lower East Side Ecology Center is up to. Zach for Isaiah's Fig Tree signing off. Peace.